In this video, I'd like to talk about Henry's Law. Henry's Law tells us about how gases dissolve into liquids. The example we're all most familiar with is likely a soda can. So we know soda is carbonated, right? That's why it tastes fizzy. And the way that they achieve that effect is they actually dissolve carbon dioxide gas into the liquid soda. So I've sketched a soda can here and you can see that I've got a blue soda and these black dots represent gas molecules and you can see that there's some gas above the surface of the soda and other gas molecules are actually dissolved inside of the soda. Henry's Law tells us about this situation. Henry's Law says that the concentration of the gas dissolved in the liquid, concentration of gas here, this term, is equal to K the Henry's Law constant for a specific gas and liquid pair, and this is important, it has to be a specific gas and liquid pair. So for this situation, it would be CO2 gas and liquid soda. P gas is the partial pressure of your gas of interest above the liquid. And importantly, this has to be a single gas of interest that you're looking at. You can only do Henry's Law for one gas at a time. Okay, so let's do an example problem. If the concentration of CO2 dissolved in the sparkling water in a closed soda can is 0.075 molal, what is the partial pressure of CO2 gas in the can at 25 degrees Celsius? So this is clearly a Henry's Law problem because they're telling us about a gas dissolved in a liquid, they give us a concentration of the gas, and then they're asking for a partial pressure of the gas. So I went ahead and used my Henry's Law formula. So the concentration of the gas was actually given to us, right? They said the concentration of CO2 dissolved in the sparkling water in a closed soda can is this concentration. And remember, this is the concentration of the gas dissolved in the liquid. So I put this 0.075 molal right here. And I set that equal to my Henry's Law constant for this specific gas and liquid pair. In this case, it's CO2 gas and liquid water. And I found that the Henry's Law constant for CO2 in water at 25 degrees Celsius is 0.034 moles per kilogram times bar. And you should be able to find this on a table. Then I solved for P gas because they asked for the partial pressure of the CO2 gas in the can at 25 degrees Celsius. And I found that it was 2.21 bar. All right, let's do another example problem. So a tank filled with water is pressurized with H2O gas and H2 gas. The total pressure in the tank is five bar at zero degrees Celsius. The partial pressure of H2O gas is 0.15 bar. Find the concentration of H2 gas in the water. So this is clearly a Henry's Law problem whenever they're asking about gases, liquids, concentrations, and partial pressures, you're almost certainly dealing with a Henry's Law problem. So I went ahead and wrote out the Henry's Law equation right here, and I also sketched out our situation. So this is my tank here, and you can see the water level is right here, it goes up to here, and I shaded in the water with blue, and the red dots represent H2 gas molecules, while the blue dots represent H2O gas molecules. So remember the pressure in the tank overall is five bar but the partial pressure of H2O in the tank is only 0.15 bar. That means the vast majority of the pressure, in other words, five minus 0.15, 4.85 bar of the pressure is coming from the H2 gas. And that's why I've drawn a lot more of those red molecules in here. The small 0.15 bar contribution by the water vapor is simply because of the natural vapor pressure above the surface of this liquid here. Some of the water molecules are evaporating and becoming water vapor, and they're contributing just a very small partial pressure into the, the total pressure here. So if we want to find the concentration of H2 gas in the water, we're going to have to focus on that gas for our Henry's Law equation. So I want concentration of H2 gas and of course I need the K for the Henry's Law constant for H2 in water at zero degrees Celsius, and you should be able to find this on a table, 7.8 times 10 to the negative four moles per kilogram times bar. So I plug that in here, and of course the, the partial pressure of the gas, this is very important, this is a key part of this problem. You have to subtract out the partial pressure coming from water, because we only want the partial pressure coming from H2. You can only do a Henry's Law equation for one gas at a time. So really you put 4.85 bar in for here, and then you find the concentration of H2 gas in this water, dissolved in the water, is 3.8 times 10 to the negative three molal. Notice we end up in units of molality. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please share it with a friend and give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.